all right folks thank you for joining so last time we discussed about power query uh, so power query is effectively a backend of power bi which takes care of all the etl transformations for for our data dashboard now today we are going to look at uh, data modeling in in power bi so as you see this is a report view on the extreme left hand side then you have data view that you can view data for yourself and then there is a model view right so this model view talks about how the tables are connected to each other and today we are going to learn just that so first of all i'll delete all the existing relationships good morning yes i am yeah. uh, so good. so as we discussed last time right for setting up any data model or setting up any data in a way that it is normalized in nature so whenever we are create a database or whenever we create any schema we follow the normalization process the normalization process in a, is a way in which you arrange tables and columns in a certain manner so that the redundancy gets eliminated and you minimize the errors you simplify queries and more and more of all like you improve the dashboard performance and the query performance so as we seen yesterday that there is a fact table and there is a lookup table right so we have one fact table and we have multiple lookup tables so just like that you all have must have received an email from me with all these tables uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in your backend you can download and you can um, just open this power bi at your end um, and then we'll, we'll slowly we'll build this data model we'll first understand this data set and once we understand the data we'll create a data model from this right so for now what you have received in your email is all these tables not related to each other so you can just quickly download all of all that table or all that data set pbx file and uh, you can get started so first of all we'll try to understand data so first table that we have is calendar lookup right so calendar lookup if you see it has date column and it has all the attributes that we can think of related to date like day of the week month or month year start of the year start of the week right so all of this information is present in calendar lookup right next is customer lookup so when we look at customer lookup it has all the information related to each and every one customer right so it could be name birth date marital status gender uh, their contact information annual income so on and so forth then we have product category uh, so we have four broader categories of product bikes components clothing and accessories then we have product lookup which is slightly more detailed version of product uh, category and then we have another granularity which is product subcategory right so even there is subcategory then there is sales so this is our actual data this is where actually transactions are happening this is where actually orders are coming in and this is our fact table which is where which it will tell us the operational details of our business right and the next is territory lookup again a lookup table with has all the attributes related to territory which is region country continent okay and if you see every table every table has a unique identifier so sales every lookup table i would say has a unique identifier which is sales territory key calendar has date customer lookup has customer key right unique um, then product category has product category key which is unique product lookup has product key which is unique so every lookup table has one unique column which is non repetitive in nature and non blank in nature so that is effectively what we call a primary key in sql terminology that is whichever is unique in nature and it is a unique identifier of that table we call as a primary key okay so just remember that every lookup table has a primary key now 
when we are looking at this data model what we see is that whichever tables that we have imported are reflecting over here so for now in the simplest term possible there is no way that these tables are talking to each other right these tables are not talking to each other so let's see how and let's see uh, what do i mean by that so i'll take what i'll do i'll create one chart okay or i'll just create a table for simplicity sake i'll take date over here and i'll just quickly do year and month right and then from my fact table which is taking all my transactions uh, i'll take order quantity okay and now please take a close look at how the values are reflecting right so all the values that are reflecting are same so if you look at this it doesn't make sense right it doesn't make sense that every month we are having same number of trans uh, orders so what does this mean that if i'm creating a visual from two different tables and i'm taking the numerical value from the sales table and categorical value from another table it is not understanding how they are talking to each other right so let's go back to my model view right and i see a date column here and here i see order date right so what i will do i'll create a relationship between these two tables so i'll just take order and put it on date so what has happened it has created a relationship right so if you see this one and this asterisk and then this uh, arrow so the one represent that the every column in the date table is unique right there is no repetitions there but for order date that i have selected over here there are many values okay so it is a one to many relationship which is also called as cardinality and this arrow represents that this table is filtering this table my calendar lookup is filtering my sales table yes sachin yeah yes 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 so one two many okay now in this case we have date table okay and we have orders table now this is taking all the transactions okay orders table and date table is my lookup table so whenever i'm creating a lookup table right i will just do one date for every one record right so i'll just take today's date and then i'll add all the attributes related to today which is year right month right and then i'll just have one specific record for this case one specific date for every row and then when it comes to transactions i might have multiple well multiple transactions having in same day right i can have many transactions having one day so that's why if you see i the transactions happening for this day could be 10 or 15 or in this case it's 9 right so what it tells us when i took this column and joined with this column what is telling me that when i joined it automatically said that for every one value which is present over here there are multiple values present over here so that's why we call as one to many relationship does that uh, make sense or uh, it is it is a little complicated but but uh, i'm like slowly will understand so as you click on this uh, arrow right uh, or or this line if you look at this uh, this table which has come up it says edit relationship right so on the top it is telling me that for my sales table order date and this date have joined with each other they those are highlighted and it is joined with my calendar lookup table right the cardinality is many to one so sales has many values for orders and my lookup table has one one value 
and the cross filter di direction is single which means that this table is filtering my sales table okay now hold your thought and we'll if before joining what we were seeing is we were seeing that all the values for month year were same for that sales values right now if i go to that dashboard again now if you see the values are different it looks realistic in nature so what we have just established is that we have established a communication for two tables to talk to each other through one common key in this case is date and as i said one table has just one value another table has multiple values that's why it is one to many relationship does that answer your question sachin right yeah 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 the the name does not matter name does not matter the values in which we are joining matters Yes, Shripa. Mm -hmm. Minute one, right? yeah yeah it will be still still be the same just give me a minute yeah so to answer your question yes we'll do it again so what we will do is we'll take the other option right as you mentioned and see what happens always forget to plug my charger sorry about that so uh, i'll just delete this relationship now we'll take the other way around right will take date and i'll put it on order date still happens the same way okay and if i open the relationship box it's the same thing right and if you are little confused or if you don't want to do this you can again do it without actually overlapping this this is lazy way of joining two tables you can do this using manage relationships right and in manage and relationships you say either you say auto detect i will not recommend this because it will join based on its own and it will not consider order date difference between order date or stock date right there are two dates in my sales table i want to make sure i want to join order date with my date table right so i'll never use auto detect always use new right and then here i'll take calendar lookup here i'll take sales okay and now i say join this with this and once i have clicked on both of these it says one to many because my calendar table is on the top that's why if my aw sales was on the top it will say many to one but it means the same thing so why don't you all go ahead and create this relationship and let me know if you face any problems there you all have the pbx file in your email this is the crux of power bi that today we are talking about if you understand this everything else is just fluff this is the most critical part of power bi anyone succeeded while doing that yeah
yes with it yes correct yeah So Sachin, have you able to, are you able to connect two tables together? So, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Sripad, what about you? Okay, cool. Cool, so you are able to join these two tables together. Uh, what about you, Kostuk? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. data type okay okay right right correct correct yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay Yes, correct, correct. So no matter where the database is or data source is, uh, you will always be able to create relationships like this. Yeah. Yes. They are not joints, right? Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't. Yes, we'll be doing that. So we'll be first covering the relationships uh, in terms of like how we handle the architecture. Because if you see, first we set up the schema. Once we have schema in place, then we talk about joins. So this is the first step where we are uh, establishing relationship, designing schemas. And once we have that, then when, when we go to this transform data tab, there is merge queries option. So that is kind of like left join, right join, inner join. Uh, so I wanted to touch base on this topic first and then uh, uh, then we'll be doing that. And if you see when we are creating this visuals, it is kind of left join as well. But I would say kind of not exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, to, to answer your question, we'll be touching that as we will be moving that. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, great, great. Yes, Shripa. Mm -hmm. Okay, Microsoft Access, right. It's quite similar. I would say it's quite similar. There is not much difference. Uh, there also we can create these kind of tables. We'll have view. So in Access also you see this kind of views, right? And you can join this, so it's quite similar, like you see. It's quite similar. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, no, no, not in terms of manual, but I have not used access as much, but access has more, uh, so 
excel is more of flat table kind of structure right flat table whereas access is more of setting up relationship you can create forms out of it you can uh, run reports out of it join two three tables together so that is how um, the use of access is good thing about access is that it handles data up to 2 gbs uh, excel might crashes crash down so it was kind of like power bi but i won't say power bi because you cannot create charts in access it is more of joining two three tables together and getting the data set for your analysis in access no we cannot because access has functionality of creating forms user input forms and uh, there are some functionalities which is like taking input from user and storing it somewhere power bi doesn't do that yes we have power apps for that to take user input that's a different tool yeah but but power bi just is as a front end we can integrate power apps into power bi uh, but not like the access has the straightforward usage and like it's is i think it's quite nobody uses access anymore at least not in i haven't seen people use access at least in last 3 4 years okay so all of you have connected this data right this two tables together perfect so what we have done we have two tables one is lookup table one is transactions table or operations table or fact table and we have established relationship between them using one common column right so whenever we are establishing relationship please make sure that the data type as niket has mentioned has to be same second if any one of these have null values it might throw error or even though date has one null or one blank value it will establish many to many relationship okay so whenever we are joining tables there are three three different relationships which are possible first is one to one second is one to many and third is many to many okay only these three relationships are possible when we are joining two tables together so always remember that a good way of joining two table together or the best practices say that we always use one to many or one to one one to one doesn't make sense because not possible in practical scenario but one to many yes we can do that many to many there is a way we can handle it and whenever you will be building dashboards you will encounter a situation in your life in if you get into power bi analytics that the there will be a situation that you will be face joining two tables with many to many relationship we'll discuss that how do we solve that issue but for now what we are looking at is one to many relationship which is called as cardinality in power bi terminology and the direction of filter now once we spoke of cardinality the second is cross directional filter right so cross directional filter means what okay so i'll go back to this visual again and now if you see over here these columns are filtering my sales table values so it is saying that for 25th january what is my order quantity now if there is no relationship which exists then it will just throw one number one random number which which is not accurate at all but what is happening right now is that my calendar table is filtering out my sales table this is cross filtering which is called as right so now if i let's say if i add a slicer over here right and this slicer i am taking it from customer lookup let's take day name okay and if i say saturday the values get filtered okay so my calendar table is filtering my sales table this is how this cross filtering join works and now i can set it to both directions as well i can set it to both direction as well and i say apply security filter in both direction what this this means that if i take any attribute from sales table and i i try to filter this table calendar lookup i can filter that okay there is no need as such but we can do that using cross filter directional both 
but if you want to have a good power bi dashboard performance you should always use single okay it's not like you cannot use it you can there is no problem in it but i would recommend using single cross filter direction and many to one or one to many relationship for good dashboard performances okay so let's just take both for now and i'll select apply security filter in both directions now if you see what has changed here the arrow has changed it says that both filter both tables are filtering each other okay and now if i take filter from order date now i selected one random date of orders it is filtering my data as well okay so this is what cross filtering direction is that we are able to filter each other as a table okay so make sure you use both of them explore both of them but i would recommend many to one and just single uh, as a as a good relationship practice yes it doesn't it doesn't make sense that uh, yeah it doesn't make sense but you can use it like uh, there would be a situation where you will have two fact tables uh, and one fact table should be able to filter out the other fact table in that case it could be useful but filtering out lookup table doesn't make sense as you said okay yes shripa Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay mm -hmm. so in that case also what you will be taking is discount and month right month right so it is quite similar to what you are looking at right now so it has one numerical attribute coming from sales table and one categorical attribute coming from month table so you can achieve that using single filter direction as well so you don't need like even if you try to find out which month that is still achievable using using single filter direction but you know if if you want to find let's say that that there there are some values which are present uh, in this calendar lookup table or some some filterable option and you are trying to filter it by order number let's say and you want to see by order number i want to see how many start of the year or month name were there similar to what case you have mentioned possible no i'm not saying not possible but i'm saying maybe not the best practice maybe what you can do is create a view or create new table which has all that information but whenever you are designing a schema so whenever you work in bi projects you have that freedom of selecting all these tables in a way that you can have a good one to many relationship okay so using that analogy try to create one to many relationship so because why i'm saying this because when you are dealing with huge data set right it has to go through like it has to flow through both directions 
and that degrades the dashboard performance. If you are dealing with, let's say, 10,000 rows and not dealing with huge, huge number of rows, then it's then it's not a problem. You can do that because think of it like this for every well. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So even though I just take one, like I'll just take drop down. Sorry. So slicer settings, drop down, right? And you want to take one. So as as we are selling, because it is order quantity, it is maybe they have just ordered one, two, three. There are just three values in order quantity. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 you see product key, customer key. So maybe we have a different data set for that. We can use our regular data set. Let's just try over that. Okay, I'm having some data related issues. Okay, we we'll find something else. No, no, it's okay. Yes, yes. Uh, no, I'll just try once again. Let's me let's try once more. Uh, uh, hopefully, it should work. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I'll just stop presenting. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So you can uh, go to transform data quickly. And here in the people's table, select people's table and say use first row as headers on the top on the right side right right go right yeah. yeah and then just say close and apply <coughs> yeah yeah we can so we just want to he wants to filter something so go to relationships and join yeah it has already as you see join person with uh, I guess manager name or something so just click on that relation yeah region region to region yeah right okay mm -hmm. so your question is mm -hmm. yeah take region from the people table Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you are doing right now is that you are taking column, right, of quantity, right? That column quantity is ranging from 1 to 40, right? And that's why it is showing 1 to 40. But let's say you want to do the aggregated version. Think of transform data options we have, right? So what we'll have to do is we'll have to group by the data. Take the group group by data and then use that as a uh, slicer. So copy this order, uh, duplicate this. Right click on orders, make a duplicate. Okay. Now go to transform data on the top, and you see first option as group by. Now take whichever aggregation like by region let's say mm -hmm. sum sum and take quantity Okay. Hmm. It will automate once you close and apply, you will see that relation has been automatically created. Let's see and let's see, let's see what happens. Go to close and apply and let's see. Go go to relationship tab first. So, yeah, but as you see, <laughs> it has created with people, right? So now close, uh, delete this relationship. Uh, yeah, yeah. So whenever, like, whenever you are using Power BI, never say auto detect. This is the. This is always. This always takes the auto detect, and you can't. Like, it automatically does it. So join the region with region from orders table take the region and put into region of orders orders not people it's 
okay go to manage relationship it's easier that way yes yeah. new it's two and orders yes it has automatically set region region it has selected automatically one to many single relationship select okay i'll tell you another problem that we that we might encounter after this say okay close good come to front end right so now just remove that uh, like remove both of those um yeah and select a table go to orders to take quantity yeah for now just take from this table right now put slicer so let me ask you this so if you take quantity from the original orders table it will again show from 1 to 14 right and if it filters the order to table how it 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 won't first of all because it won't understand right so because there are just four rows in it only this way yes it is happening it is it is happening but because you are taking quantity from the orders to table not from the original table yeah yeah so that is how like we you need to aggregate it now let's say you want to more deep dive and do more analysis then you will have to increase the granularity of group by yeah so yeah but yeah this is one way of doing things but not very effective but yes that can be achieved well so whenever you say aggregations whenever you want to apply filters of aggregation you can achieve that using uh let's say either you can create buckets right and those bucket here yeah, bucket mm -hmm. yes uh so there is another way we can use through dax and from dax we can have that dynamic uh create creation of values or buckets which will say highlight or give me create a flag when the order quantity is more than 10000 yes yes nikhil yes yeah yes he yeah definitely that is the best way uh yeah that is a yeah we can or we can go back to uh, yeah yes yeah but but hope you get the uh, point like yeah so uh, okay so now i'll go back to the relationships again and and now we have created one relationship right so let's quickly build another relationships with other tables as well right 
so now think of which tables uh, should be joined with each other right so we look at customer key okay so there is a customer key present over here and there is a customer lookup right so we can just take customer key to customer key okay and now we have established another relationship between these two tables so can you all just quickly do that yes yes correct pack table and others are look up table after that i have territory key and territory lookup right so i'll join this territory key with sales territory key and we have another relationship which is established with one to many okay so try this as well then we have product key so i'll take product key and put it on product key as well so i have another relationship with product lookup so i have right now four relationships which are ongoing now i see two more tables so i'll just wait before you all try this and let me know if you have any challenges there sachin are you able to join tables okay okay nikhil so so as you see that you have created relationship between these four tables right and uh, you have one central table which is sales table uh also are you able to do this have you created four relationships okay perfect okay now we have product category key product category key so now if i see on this table there is product category key and i don't see product category key anywhere over here right but i see that present here so i'll join product category key with product category and i see product sub category key present over here so i'll join these tables these two tables so that's how i've created with one to many relationship with this all relations now if you see bottom you can create additional tab okay this additional tab is like useful when we have so many tables together right so if you add a new tab and this is auto layout so if you do auto layout it will set tables as we selected like it will create the same relationships but it will just change the layout in a way it feels that for us it's easy to view okay or the other option is instead of auto layout if there are 20 tables you have joined with each other but you if you just want to understand two or three tables and how they talk to each other you can go to this you add a calendar lookup table and you add sales lookup table and it will tell us how these two tables are connected to each other so it is just layout nothing else okay so that's how you can create a relationship between tables and once you have established relationship you can create charts for your analysis so always use that whenever we are creating any charts the chart the x axis possibly should be taken from lookup table if it's achievable and possible for good dashboard performance it's a best practice and then whatever values are those should be coming from our fact table or line items right so that's how you can create relationships and we will again cover this briefly in our next sessions 
and once we cover relationships then the next topic that we'll go will be going is dax and prior to dax i'll just explain how we connect two three different tables together but for now please try to create relationships between tables uh, we have sample superstore data as well take that sample superstore data and establish relationship between existing tables and try to see if you can build charts using two different tables and how can you do that right and yeah i mean that's how you can look at things and once we are done with this uh will be and will be just uh the only topic which will be remaining is tax but this is the most crucial part of power bi please take a look please try to you know practice this as much as possible and ask as many questions because this is the most critical part if you understand this you will understand probably everything else related to power bi yeah yeah so types of yeah 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 true 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 so types of relationship one to many many to many one to many filter direction single or both right and for every time to join tables you need to have primary key and foreign key primary key is unique identifier of a table it has non null values it has unique values right and foreign key could have duplicate values so in that way it is it establish one to many relationship right and the best practice is always use one to many relationship with single filter direction for better dashboard performances right this is always they always ask us in the interview these questions are always asked first question if they want to really judge your performance of our va they will ask how do you join two tables together in relationship what are the types of relationship okay which relationships have you worked on how how those relationship impact dashboard performance these are common interview questions so please i have sent this file try to join these create a schema like this 3 4 times and then you'll be really comfortable and then i'll give you some other data sets as well you can start joining them and let me know if you face any challenges or there okay okay perfect yes shripat foreign key can have null values you can still establish relationship between between two tables but it is advisable if you can avoid null values or blank values uh, for primary key yeah there is, you cannot have null values if it's one if you want to establish one to many but for many it can have null values and it should be okay right 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 yeah so the, so still it will work the security filter is mostly about row level security so row level security is something that we'll cover in upcoming sessions but so if you are using row level security so row level security means let's say you are building a dashboard for a startup your startup has four regional heads in india okay but when you are creating dashboard for them you don't want to show west region data to east region guy or east region data to central zone guy right so at that point of time you set up row level security and while establishing that row level security you when you tick that check box it means that the row level security also plays equal role that whenever you are filtering data with each other the security remains intact so that's why it says security but even if you don't check that it's still fine best practices always use it so but but yeah as i have uh, earlier mentioned always remember best practices one to many relationship single directional common interview questions and common dashboard related uh, performance issues that we see so if someone reaches out to you and says my dashboard performance has degraded most likely his data model has some issues in it okay the second he has he is be using he could be using too many dax or unnecessary columns so So yeah, that's how you can establish relationship between Power BI. After that, um, if you get some time this week, read about left join, right joins, inner joins in SQL. Once we 
when we touch on that point it will be good to have you know some some sort of basic understanding but again we'll we'll take that in our upcoming sessions okay in sql in sql not power bi in sql like foundational joints like inner joint outer joint left joint full outer joints try to read about it and we'll take that in our upcoming sessions okay thank you very much for joining and let me know if you have any questions or concerns else we'll wrap up the session okay thank you all